So I just wanted to touch briefly on uh, aviation charts that are used for international navigation and the company that uh, produces these is called Jeppesen and they have an airways manual system and uh, comprises of many different volumes for the different countries and uh, we've got uh, coverage for the whole world so there's uh, Europe, China, USA, okay, we've got uh, Africa, Australasia and uh, basically the maps um, get updated quite frequently. Uh, every 14 days we'll get uh, new amendments. So I've just gone through and updated our company uh, booklets and you'll see all the old stuff just gets tossed in the bin. And as I said, every 14 days there's new chart updates. It just comes in uh, a little envelope like that. But um, what I want to do is just uh, talk very briefly about some of the, uh, what they call the orientation charts. And these are the large scale maps. So we've got one for the North Atlantic there and we've got one for the South Atlantic. Now, these are rectangular charts, but notice the actual coverage area of chart one, for example, you know, as it goes towards the North Pole, the coverage gets wider like that. And I'll explain that a little bit more when I open up the chart. Similarly, when you look at the Southern Hemisphere, chart number four between uh, South America and Africa, look at the shape of it, but the actual chart is rectangular. So there's a lot of distortion going on when you try to um, depict the globe on a, uh, on a two-dimensional surface and uh, as you'll see when I open up the chart um, even though on this little uh, sample the lines of uh, longitude are parallel on the actual chart itself they're converging down towards the South Pole and that's the only way you can get um, accurate scale all over the map. So just touching on the scale of the map for a map to be accurate the uh, distances should be correct anywhere that you measure on the map and uh, if you have a look at the top here, it's saying that one inch equals 80 nautical miles on this map. Now this is the whole uh, coverage of Australia from uh, Perth all the way across to Sydney. Now Perth is down here in the, um, the southwestern side of Australia and Sydney's over here on the, uh, on the east coast. Melbourne's down the bottom, Adelaide's here and Brisbane is up here. But what you'll notice is these lines are what they call the air routes, okay? And there's predefined air routes that commercial aircraft and corporate aircraft fly. And each distance between smaller waypoints is listed clearly on the map. So you'll see that's 161 miles. You can pick any two points and it's going to list the distance there in nautical miles. The whole of Australia is accurately mapped like that. And uh, this is why I just find it quite ridiculous when you look at maps like the AE map or the Gleason's map that show Australia being twice the size of the USA because it's just not. You can measure it on this map, you can go on flight, you can even drive from Sydney to Perth. It's about 4,000 kilometres by road and I've done that many times. So uh, yeah, basically we do know the size of the earth, we do know the accurate, accurate dimensions of Australia and uh, aircraft are flying around it all the time. I've flown all these routes from Perth up north to Darwin to Broome, from Melbourne to Broome, from Adelaide to Broome, Adelaide to Darwin, Sydney to Brisbane, Sydney to Cairns. I've flown across Australia dozens of times, Sydney to Perth more times than I can remember. So uh, these are the accurate charts and uh, you know, it's just no mistake about the size of the, um, the continent of Australia. It's definitely not bigger than the USA. Anyone who's driven across it or flown across it can tell you that. So talking a little bit more about this uh, South Atlantic orientation chart, what I'll do is just uh, open it up and you'll see that um, it's a rectangular chart and it's depicting that shape on the Earth's surface. So you'll see in the chart when I open it up that the uh, lines of longitude are converging quite uh, sharply towards the South Pole. So there's the South Atlantic orientation chart opened up and that's uh, South America. You can see on the uh, left hand side of the map. And there's Africa. Now notice the orientation. Africa is sort of oriented that way and South America is oriented that way. And you'll see these lines of longitude are coming down like that and they're starting to angle. Try and get the whole perspective in there. Okay, they're starting to angle because they all converge down towards the South Pole here. That's the only way you can get accurate distance all over the map is to have the lines of longitude converging because the further south you go from the equator the distance between these lines of longitude reduces and you'll see the scale of the map is uh, on this one is one inch equals 150 nautical miles and uh, there's an air route going from South America 
across to Cape Town in Africa. Now we get these charts updated quite frequently and these are, these are two of the older charts so if anyone wants them you know just uh, send me a message on the um, the comments and whoever's first I'll just stick these in the post and uh, send them to you. You can have a look at them and just uh, analyze them and measure them yourself. So basically these are the aeronautical charts that international pilots use to fly all around the world. Okay, Of course they're going to be accurate. One inch equals uh, 150 nautical miles on this chart and you'll see the orientation of South America, the orientation of Africa, the lines of longitude converging down towards the South Pole and the geographical area covered by a rectangular map actually represents that shape on the surface of the Earth. So uh, yeah, aeronautical charts don't lie because uh, aircraft are flying reliably all around the world every day.